And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, creator of the, uh, the upcoming project Final Stardust. Which we'll be which we'll be getting into quite a bit af after the success of its um, vertical sli after the successful launch of its vertical slice not too long ago. The one and only Nur Saldana, or so not Saldana, Saldana. What the hell am I thinking? How are you doing today, man? Hey, I'm doing great. But after that intro, I don't have much to say to be honest. I think it's <laughs> I'm already KO. Yeah, I um. I tend to I tend to go a bit I tend to open things up a bit um, boisterous, is, is one way to put it. So yeah, at least we start with some energy. It's mm -hmm. always good. Yeah. <clears throat> so it one of the traditions around here is to open with the humble beginnings, and with that in mind, um, I'd li I'd like I'd like you to walk me through the story of one. Your introduction to um, to gaming in general and ro and role and role playing video games specifically, and two, mm -hmm. the origin story of cre of creating um, Final Stardust. Okay, so so um, like many people, I've always been like a gamer and. A fan of um, a lot of RPGs. I've always been fascinated by Japanese culture, so I always liked video games and anime and things like that. And I've I've been a fan of Pokemon as well. I grew up with Pokemon. I think it's the only game that I really played from the very beginning until the end. Like I played all the Pokemon games, at least the the main series. And so um, I was kind of disappointed when I started to see what was happening with the latest games because they weren't as polished um the difficulty was thrown out of the window and it kind of i wouldn't say piss, pissed me off but i was like oh if only i had some you know possibilities some possibilities to do my own thing mm -hmm. and th that wasn't the only game that was bothering me it, it was also other things um in the same like field for example um golden sun was one of my favorite rpgs when i was young and it was never continued. And in my opinion, it was the only JRPG that was able to compete against the games like um, Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy. And on top of that, when it comes to anime, I was a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Yu-Gi-Oh! especially 5Ds was like my favorite anime ever. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like how, same thing as Pokemon, they started focusing too much on kids and all the, like, the badass aspect just disappeared. So... I had kind of these mixed feelings about uh, the different games and anime, mm -hmm. and um, I never thought that I would make a like a video game or anything. It was just like, oh, I wish I can have um, the the skills to make a video game, like a lot of people, but I never really had the courage to to start. And so um, when I was kind of twenty five, I had a lot of personal problems, a lot of financial problems, and all that. Long story short. I was like, okay, maybe I need to build a business and I need to, you know, solve this financial situation. And um, I started my first business. It was something in personal development. Mm -hmm. Because I was going through so many problems, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start to improve myself, start to go to the gym, read books, um, sleep better, uh, learn about how to manage money properly and all of that. And so since I was doing that, I was, I was thinking I might as well um, maybe coach some people or teach some people that are going through a different phase, uh, through a similar phase, I mean. And so th that was the idea of my first business. But after like two years and something and working extremely hard, um, it flopped completely and I didn't make any money. So um, at some point I had to admit to the fact that it wasn't going to work mm -hmm. and I had to find something else. And so uh, at that point, I didn't know what to do, to be honest. I was kind of lost because I thought that was the thing for me. And so I tried to get a job, but I couldn't get a job. Like, I wasn't able to get a job. Mm -hmm. um, I have a software engineering degree, but 
Um, I didn't really code. Like I started coding a little bit towards the end of my studies, and I never really cared because I was busy with the first business. So I didn't have like a portfolio or something worth showing. So um, companies didn't really care. And so at that point, I was like, okay, um, I don't know what to do. Um, I really want to build my own business. Uh, what can I do? So I started to list ba basically my skills and the things that I can actually do. So I had um, some exp some experience in video editing. Um, when I was uh, younger, I did a lot of video editing. Um, I've been practicing Japanese for a couple of years, mm -hmm. even though I'm still not fluent. Um, I've always loved video games, and I did a little bit of business. So when I combined all of that together, the idea was game development, mm -hmm. especially when you add a little bit, a little bit of coding, because um, that was my degree basically. Even though I didn't do much coding, mm -hmm. and so yeah, that, that's basically how I started. I didn't know anything about game development or how to code a game, but I was like, um, that's how it is with business, anyways. You never know, and so I'll just learn while doing. And to talk about the the the, the progress of the game very quickly. It started as a fan project, basically. That was the goal. So I wanted to make a game just to train myself. Because I was like, it's going to take me at least three years before I can think about working on a game. And so I started practicing and watching tutorials and all that. Um, and then I tried to form a team mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning. So I ran some Facebook ads. I didn't have a lot of money, but I ran like a hundred dollars um, in ads, I think I put everything I had, and I tried to f like form a team or create a team, and I had like around 15 to 20 people in, in the Discord. It was a new Discord, and I had like um, a music composer, an artist, one developer, etc., etc. And I was like, okay, perfect, we can do something. But the problem is, I quickly realized that people weren't as motivated as me. Like I was here, just doing a game design document working all the time, trying my best and hustling and all that. But um, for people, it was like a bonus, you know, it's it's like a f f uh, uh, fun project, you know. Uh, I'll send you a concept art when I have time. Mm -hmm. I'll contact you when I feel like doing it, etc. So I realized that it was impossible to do anything um, interesting within a reasonable time frame because I don't want to spend seven years to make a fan game. So that's when I started to go completely solo and find other ways to make it happen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I saw the Kickstarter campaign and you you know the rest. Yeah. Um and what I do what I do find what I do find particularly interesting is the the three the three points of inspiration that you've that you've mentioned regarding Final Stardust. Um because e each of them each of them have been a have been a interest have been an interesting case. Um, obviously, obviously with po with Pokemon, um, that is that I'd say, I'd say if I need, if I wanted to make a perfect analogy of the state of Pokemon, it's the leaning tower of Pisa, just with the height of the tower of Babel. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I mean, there are so many ways to describe the situation. And I think, honestly, I was thinking it was a bad thing at first, but, um, I think it was kind of a good thing if you think about game development because it opened the door to so many indie developers and now so many developers started doing their own um, Pokemon-like game mm -hmm. and adding their own twist to it. So I think it gave a huge opportunity to a lot of people well, because a lot of people saw like a breach and the, or like um, kind of like a loophole or something and they were like, okay, just all in and now we have companies that you know, have a business and everything that have a Pokemon-like game, so... Well, Foxcade... Uh, a YouTuber named Foxcade did a, vid did a video called Pokemon A Logistical Nightmare, and um, he had mentioned that one, one of the things that really, sh that really shot them in the foot is, is, that, is that catchphrase that they use during Gen 1, and <laughs> the whole gotta, gotta catch them all thing, and the problem is once 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 it hit and it hit big, um, and they start and they started introducing more, because of because of that catchphrase. There's that mindset of they have to include 
and any a new gen has to include everything from the previous gens and make it cross compatible, which um, has let has led to has led to more problems than it's worth. Where compare that to say the Digimon games over the years, where if if a if a mon doesn't show doesn't show up between games, nobody's gonna bat an eye. Yeah, you are uh, right when you say this because, um, like, when people accept a game that's in 3D and triple A quality with like 800 Pokemon, it, it's impossible even for the biggest studios. Like, it's just not realistic. So, we they either need to just focus on new Pokemon, like introducing like 150, and that's it. You only have that, but the game is polished. Or they can introduce more monsters, but not all the monsters. Like um, maybe some odd 3D models, they can reuse that and uh, make the Pokedex go from 150 to like, I don't know, 300, so that you have enough Pokemon, but mm -hmm. without overdoing it. Because it, it's imp it's impossible to polish the whole thing and have the whole Poked Pokedex is yeah, way too much. Especially now, especially now when the when when the to when the total list is in the th is in the thousands um but the the problem is even by by the time crystal came out they had dro they had dropped that moniker but um but it had been it had become so ingrained in the zeitgeist of its fan of its fan base that the damage was done um which is which is why i've i had seen some fans say that say that a Pokemon game in the style of Breath of the Wild would be awesome. I'm like, do you have any idea how much of a nightmare that'd be? That's never happening. <laughs> yeah, it it would be way too much. And I don't think that's something that fits Pokemon, to be honest, because I'm not I'm not saying that it wouldn't work with an open world, but Pokemon has never been about, you know, high end graphics or uh, the best technology ever. It has always been s simplistic in a way. Mm -hmm. And it did its own thing. So just forcing open words because it's a good idea. I don't know if it necessarily fits like Pokemon. Yeah, granted, a lot of that simplicity was due to, was due to them wanting to um, make the best out of the limitations they had with the original Game Boy hardware. Because um, yeah, because even that because even with that they were pushing it. Um, but there was, but there was also the fact that. Um, Game Freak wanted to prove that you could do a, f a properly realized RPG on a handheld. Um, but I can, but because because of that logistical issue, that's why you have the the you have this kind of bad habit of ideas being introduced in certain generations and then ne and then never followed up on or complete or completely abandoned. Um. Like the like the whole mega evolution thing in X, or the or um or the te well the tag team thing lasted a few generations before before it before it just disappeared. But there but it's a case of because of, because of because of that logistical issue they can't they can't they can't really iterate on it. Yeah, actually, I don't know why they do that exactly. I would be curious to know what's their reasoning behind it because there there are so many great ideas they can implement again, but they don't really do them. I think I was thinking maybe um, at first they wanted every generation to be unique and have its own features, but the problem is some games are re um, not replayable. Like um, we don't have access to DS games, for example, unless you already have the game. Mm -hmm. And mo mo most people use emulators or something like that. So th it's not like they're saying, okay, uh, we don't want to implement the features of Gen 2 because Gen 2 can still sell and make money, right? Like it's not making money anymore. And it, even the people that are playing it, they're using an emulator. So I, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. but uh, Or maybe it's part of the marketing. I have no idea, to be honest. I... I look at it at I look at it as a case of not one of having too many <clears throat> masters. Um, uh, having to having what? Having too many masters to serve. Ah, oh, okay. Um, because the and the the mindset of if we 
if we go if we go all in on certain iterations, the people who do, the people who don't like it, we might end up um, alienating one of our one avenue of our potential of our potential audience. So let so let's play so let's not so let's not follow up on that and play things a bit more s safe for next gen. But we still have to introduce new ideas in order in order to make it in, in order to make it not just a not just a roster change a la um fi a la FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's but and I th I'd say I'd say that's why for me at least for the for the last se for the last several generations I found the spin-offs more interesting than the core materials. Um. Like stuff, so, whether it be whether it be Snap, whether it be um, Col whether it be Coliseum, or even something as ridiculous as a fighting game. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, you mean uh, Pokémon? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's. Yeah, Pokemon. or even uh, they released um, one recently. Uh, what was it called? Like Mystery Dungeon. Yeah, which was was ba was basically a top-down dungeon crawler. Yeah. Uh, in in the in the vein of um, Shiren. Um, <laughs> Now, when it came when it came to the other two, um, the Yu-Gi-Oh end. I first off, I will give you your props for referencing the best season of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Although, I've called five I've called five Ds the best season with the worst luck. What do you mean, like in terms of uh, performance? Not really. It's it's actually something that was completely outside of uh, outside of their control. Because you know how er early on Yggdrasil was was impl was implied to be this um to be this to be this secret almost Illuminati like organization. Mm -hmm. Well, and then and then later on it's revealed oh they're time travelers. Well, there is there is a reason for that. There was a ma around the time in Japan there was a massive public scandal when. A bun when a bunch of voice actors were re were revealed to be part of a cult, and okay. one of the people involved happened to be Carly's Seiyu. So the um, right, so the um, writers kind of had. Who's... Go ahead. No, no, I, I was um, asking like, who's that? Because I don't know. Um, the name, the name. Unfortunately, the name has has escaped has escaped me at the moment. But the the point is, the writers had to had to scramble to distance themselves from anything that might might appear like that because because of the PR nightmare that this whole thing caused. Hence, why I say best series with the worst luck. <laughs> okay, I, I thought you meant like it was um, kind of. Um... Underrated, kind of like um, Pokemon Black or like Gen Five of Pokemon. You see how people kind of didn't like it, but uh, now it's like um, everyone likes it. It's it's kind of weird. Um, I I don't I don't recall that I don't recall there being there being that much there being that much in the way of of backlash for it. In fact, I'd I'd say the series that came after it got more got got the brunt of the abuse. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Oh, and although even although even when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, there's there's a similar situation to Pokemon of um of t of of kind of kind of drift kind of drifting away from what made it work. Because I'll be I'll be blunt with you, I hate Pendulum Summons. <laughs> no, don't worry, I hate everything after five Ds. So you're not gonna offend me with anything you say. <clears throat> well, they introduced they introduced that with with um with Arc V, and the problem that I had with them is that it is that it's messing with flow. Oh. Um, I, I don't know. To to be honest, I think, like at, at some point, the the complexity is so high already. If you increase it even more, it would be almost nonsense. Kind of yeah. You imagine you have like an OP character. But you keep making him even more and more OP to the point where it becomes way too much. That, that's how I see it. Oh, it's kind so, of like a so Goku. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to mention anime, but I wanted to let you talk. Um, so, so yeah, 
it's the same thing with anime. Like, you have a character that's getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and at some point you're like, this this should be the final battle. Um, but they keep going even more because obviously it's profitable, and so it kind of ruins the thing for me. But um, I understand from a business pr- perspective, it's it's still a smart move. Mm-hmm. And the third, the third, the third piece, which um does, which maybe it's for the best that it only had only had three games, is in re- is in regard to um Golden Sun. Um, yeah. So, so do, do you actually know the game? Like, have you played it once oh, or? Uh, oh yeah. You just heard about it. Uh, no, I've I'm no, I'm no stranger when it comes to Golden Sun. Okay. Nice. Because you know, when I speak with someone during an interview and he doesn't know Golden Sun, um, things don't go too well. I can, I can get that and um. No, I'm I'm just kidding. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> just just in case it's not clear, people will say uh, this guy's weird. Yeah. Everybody's weird <laughs> in the temple. Okay, it's fine then. But when it came to, when it comes to I can and with all three with all three of these I can cer- I can certainly um, see the, see the influence. But when I when I was playing through the when I was playing through the ver- when I was playing through the vertical slice, it dawned on me that there was one other thing that the combat loop very much reminded me of. And this might be a li- this might be a little bit obtuse. Um, it felt like. The fa- the fan the fantasy that early Digimon tamers had promised me, but never but never delivered on. Okay, interesting. Why do you say that? By by the way, I'd be curious to know. Um, because I, I I didn't play a lot of Digimon games. I think maybe one or two, and that was like during the PS2 era. So I'm I'm more no. referring to the anime when it co- when it comes to this because the games are a whole different ballpark with Digimon. Yeah. Oh. But so which uh, anime in that case? Yeah, like like I said, um, Digimon Tamers. Um. That okay. was the uh, I don't know thir- which that was the season. third se- that was the third season. Okay, third season. Um. And the big re the big reason I the big reason I say that is you had you had the. Now, obviously, I could I could go with the whole card integration, but the main reason I say it is the fact that you have this in, you have this integration between mo- between monster and ta- and um, trainer. Obvious, obviously, the obviously the term may be different, but just the fact that that both are, that both are equally important as as opposed to having the monsters do all, do all the work in in similar kinds of games. Um. In ta- uh, it, in. Uh, isn't I mean Digimon isn't the same as Pokemon in that in that regard I mean like then, uh, is the trainer like the, is the tamer useful as well or because um, I don't remember uh, there there were su- there were some uses but it w- but it was very limited in ta- okay. in tamers they tr- they tried to do the these this kind of support card system um. But eventually, it just bit, it just ended up being another way to do digivolutions, and it's and it's never and, and of course late, later on with with something like um da- with something like data squad. Well, you well you had well you had a human pun- you had a human punching Digimon in order to get up in order to get a power up. So it's certainly it's the the. The synergy has certainly been there. It's just, it's just been very sixty forty in favor in favor of the monsters at best. Yeah, it, it's something that bothered me a little bit. Um, or you can say it's a fusion between Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh because um, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you st- I don't know. I wouldn't say like the 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 duelist is kind of useful, but he. It's kind of the case. Like, um, I don't know. He can draw like a card out of nowhere and win the duel because of you know anime story and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I feel I felt like he was a little bit more useful, but still not enough. Like, um, it 
it kind of felt that um, same thing with Pokemon. Like the the person that controls the monsters is always kind of almost useless in a way. Mm. It's like he's only using his brain. And um, I felt like we can add some spice to that in a way by making them have some at least some powers. They don't need to be like overpowered or be able to like fight against the monster one on one. But um, at least having even some kind of support or something, so that you feel like they're fighting with the monster, like um, literally uh, joined together, and not like um, using the monsters as just uh, like um, kind of tools in a way to to fight. Mm-hmm. And with because of, because of that synergy, would it would it be fair of me to say that um, that when it comes to Simons? Most of most of them are most of them are either going to be um, support items, or the, or they're going to be used for sealing. And not necessarily. Like I'm I'm trying to diversify, and I'll have a, a bit of everything. Mm-hmm. So it's not just support. Uh, so, so I mean, support is basically like any other RPG. Like it's healing, it's um, things like that. But um. Yeah, I'll have a bit of everything. So you'll have a bit of augmentation, a bit of foresight, a little bit of the other stuff. So no, it's not necessarily focused just on supporting. Mm-hmm. And something something else I, I'm I'm curious about is during when I was playing through the vertical slice of it during during the battle, there would there be random um, turn effect things that would that would show up. Yes. What was what was the inspiration to do to do to do those to do those kind of things? Um, it, it was still some ideas from Pokemon that I wanted to use differently. So, um, how can I say? Like when it comes to the battles, I wanted to do something a little bit closer to the anime. So in, in the anime, for example, if you watch Pokemon. It's not like in the game. You don't do like one move. It's super effective, and that's it. Mm-hmm. It's usually you do one move, then you dodge, then you do another move, etc. Like it's, um, it, it takes some time to beat a monster. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to replicate that with the spells, um, not being as strong, and then the synergies being a little bit stronger. It's, it's like there are powerful spells, but they take time to, to unlock. Mm-hmm. And to add on top of that, I wanted to make the battles feel a little bit more real. So. I was thinking, imagine if you're fighting against someone and then there is some rain. You know, it's not the same. Like, your speed is not going to be the same. Your um, stamina is not going to be the same. It's going to affect the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So that was the idea behind um, turn effects. It's also something that's present in Pokemon where you can use um, um, a weather effect or something. But I didn't want to use the same thing because, again, I'm trying to um, stay away from Pokemon as much as possible and mm-hmm. introduce new mechanics. So uh, that's when I was thinking about how can I add something else. And so um, I wanted to add like um, a display for turns, like how many turns passed during the battle, just for fun at the beginning. But then I was thinking, okay, so I have this turn thing. You can see like it's uh, turn 13 or 18 or 23, but it doesn't really do anything. Like am I just going to add it like um, for UI or um, is it going to be useful? So I was thinking first, maybe it can be useful for uh, people that want to speed run the game. Mm. So you can say, okay, I was able to be this boss within 30 turns or something. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, it's not enough. And so I combined that with the first idea that I had of introducing something that makes battles more realistic, that imitates kind of a weather effect. And that's where it came from. So I was, it's like all the features. <clears throat> it's It's like all the features. I just kept testing over and over again until I found something that was kind of reasonable mm-hmm. now when it comes now when it comes to one one of the one of the other things that i that i definitely notice and appreciate is that <laughs> when it came to the ceiling system that you have of using using ceiling assignments to in, to increase the um the percent the percentage when it comes the percentage of progress when it comes to ceiling there is very. Yeah. There seems to be very little in the way of R- RNG. Was di- was it a case where you didn't want to do the whole thing of using a ceiling card and then ho- and then hope it doesn't backfire? 
um, I, I wanted wow. to make it a little bit more, um, how can I say, I wanted to give more control to the player, basically. Because the problem with Pokemon is that, or other Pokemon-like games, because most of them do the same mechanic. Like, that's, that's what I'm seeing right now. Most of the games that are inspired by Pokemon, they do the same system. And so the, the problem with that is that um, it just, you have no control. I mean, you can make the, the enemy monster um, paralyzed or asleep or something like that, but it's kind of like you throw the, the, the item, whatever it is, Pokeball or something else, and then it's like you pray to, to God and you hope that it's going to work. But you have no control over it. And it doesn't feel satisfying because um, you will be able to seal the monster or like um, catch the Pokemon after two turns. And then your friend is not going to be as lucky and it's going to take him 25 turns. Mm -hmm. And he has no control whatsoever over that. So I wanted to make sure to have something that can be a little bit similar to most people but also something that you can control. Like, even if it's difficult, at least you see that you are making progress. You have an idea about when it's going to be possible to seal the monster. And not just throw the item and then wait and hope that it's going to work. And then throw the item and you repeat and you don't know anything. So that was the idea behind it. Yeah. Now, when it comes... And I, I certainly appreciate it because... Um... As the as the saying go as the saying goes, RN Jesus does not save. <laughs> I mean, a little bit of RNG is not a is not a problem. Like for example, we have RNG with Simons, right? But oh, yeah. it's not like the the RNG that makes you break the the screen. We're that, not dealing with of... XCOM bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember because I, I was playing um, Monster Hunter World. And um, you had like um, I don't know the the name anymore. I, I think it's the gems. Mm -hmm. You had like gems that can uh, increase your attack and stuff like that that you can use on your gear to get stronger. But the the chance of getting a gem is like so low. You can you you can spend one thousand hours and still not get any gem. And some people can spend uh, three hundred hours and get three gems. And it was so annoying because you have no control over it. And even if you play a lot it's not sure that you will have them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think that's um, good game design. Yeah. Now, speak, now speaking, within, speaking within that, since, since I mentioned evolutions to, to, a, to a certain degree, um, would it be, f when, it comes to the, when it comes to the way Planos, Planos work, would it, be f would it be fair of me to say that... Um, that ev that there are there are some ev there are some evolutionary chains, but it but it's a horizontal and vertical where there's the elemental chain from them leveling up as well as um the as well as applying a applying a um, planet to them. Uh, like you mean, their element is gonna change if they evolve. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm ref I'm. I'm referencing, um, I'm referencing the the elemental forms that say Fenrir has, or is it a case where most of the Planos will will only only have one element? Will only have one element. Yeah, yeah they they will only have one element. So if you have like a a Mars Plano, when he evolves, he's still a Mars Plano. There is no dual types. There is no changing types or, or elements in my case. Yeah. Um, it, it's always the same. Fenrir is the only exception. Um, because I wanted to have something a little bit different from a starter where you had, you know, um, in every game you have like a, um, a grass type and then a fire type and then a water type. Mm -hmm. I wanted to change that idea a little bit. So I made one monster having multiple elements. Mm -hmm. And that, that also can be used um, as kind of abilities or um, kind of like when you use like the hidden machines and stuff like that um, or TMs, HMs. Where you have cut, strength, and fly, and all that. So that was the idea behind it. I was like, okay, I'm, you're gonna have a monster that evolves into different forms, and then every form is gonna do something. So one form is gonna be like Mercury, for example, is gonna be for swimming. Mm -hmm. um, and Jupiter, for example, will be flying, and then uh, Venus is gonna be like a normal mount, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what I did, what I did find in. What I did find interesting is that there is, like I mentioned, like is, like I mentioned, there's that whole integration between 
between between the between the element between the elementalist and the, and their and their planos and the and the key th the key part of that synergy is well one Simons like we like we've talked about before but also the the use of stacks and I and I had seen six um stack six different types of stacks yeah now I can I can I can presume that I can obviously presume four of them being associated with the um four pla four planetary elements that you have um Venus Jupiter Mercury and Mar Mercury and Mars um yes and uh, one of them I, one of them I know is dark for the dark forms of mm -hmm. um uh, of planoses um Yes. Is the is the final would the final one be for Planos gods? Yeah, exactly. That's um celestial. Mm -hmm. It's uh, for a Seru, like the the final boss mm -hmm. you had to fight. So the, those are the monsters that can do um like the So it's basically gonna be like the strongest synergies or the like Final Judgment was supposed to be celestial synergy. Because it's um like with the animation everything you can expect it to deal a lot of damage and it, you can see that it's one of the strongest animations. I mean it's not gonna be one of the weakest. Otherwise, uh, the budget is gonna run out before I do anything. But um basically I was going to make it or or it's supposed to be a celestial synergy, but because of the vertical slice we don't have a lot of planets gods and stuff like that. I just made it into something else for testing purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be something like you unlock uh, during the end game, unless um, I give some celestial spells to Fenrir, and in that case, um, he will be the only one who can stack those um, synergies or for those synergies. Mm -hmm. And when it, I had also seen on the Kickstarter page that one other tier is um, is Mighty Planos. Oh, I know that I know that there's yeah. o there's only f there's only four of them, but th would those be equivalent to say the hot to say the high end <laughs> legendaries in something like Pokemon? Like you, you can think of um, Planet's Gods as the legendaries, like um, the, the the strongest ones in a game, and then you can think of um, the mighty Planos, like the the four dragons, as um. The secondary le legendaries. I don't know how to explain it, but um, um, uh, like if you if you take for example Gen Five, mm -hmm. Planos Gods would be something like a Reshiram and Zekrom, mm -hmm. or a Kyurem, and then um, the Mighty Planos would be something like um, like the three dogs, uh, Cobaltium, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the names. Um, the three dogs, like the the blue one, the green one, and then the brown type of mm -hmm. color. If you if you see what I mean, because I don't oh, remember yeah. the names. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on you for not remember for not remembering the names because there's too many names to remember. <laughs> yeah, and all that uh, I've played Pokemon games in different languages, so uh, it's kind of a mess in my head to be honest. And I'm not really good with names, so yeah. Um. Oh. And I now I know I know that that uh, that that characters are essentially ele are, are essentially elementalists um what what with what with within the setting um when it comes to elemental masters would the, would they be akin to um gym leaders in terms of in terms of being a boss that's themed around a certain type um Yes, you can you can say they are gym leaders. So uh, the name changed from Elemental Masters to Guardians, mm -hmm. um, because yeah, the, the name was a little bit too long. And um, basically, they're gonna protect um, the Elemental Stars. So the way you access an Elemental Star, so let's say the Mars Elemental Star, mm -hmm. is by beating um, a Mars Guardian. So that's why I changed the name because I thought it was more appropriate. But um, basically, they will be like gym leaders in Pokemon. However, I'm not sure yet if 
they're going to have um, only one element. I'm still trying to think about how I can make it a little bit different because I'm, I'm always like, in everything that I implement, I try to find a way to make it a little bit different from Pokemon. Yeah. So I'm not sure yet. Um, and speaking of elemental, st speaking of elemental stars, um, obviously, obviously those those are go those are going to be key, those are going to be key items, but um, how but how how would they how would they affect the sandbox when you end up getting one? The sandbox. You mean like the the map? How can you do you unlock more stuff? Um, both both when it comes to how you ex how you inter how you interact with the environment and when it comes to how how you in how you interact with say combat. Okay, so um, again, it's a similar idea to Pokemon, but it's um, a little bit um, tweaked. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can think of elemental stars as badges in Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So in Pokemon, you have different badges, but the badges are like decoration. They don't do anything. So I try to make them a little bit more useful because, you know, it's like a um, magical word. And I, w I was like, it's it's nice to have some, not not just badges, but like some stones or something that have some kind of power to them. Mm -hmm. And so the, those stones will be able to do different things. So um, obviously they, they are necessary for the story, but also they can, um, they are the ones that give you abilities. So things like um, cut and strength and surf and everything mm -hmm. in Pokemon, there are things that will be unlocked with the elemental stars. Mm -hmm. But the elemental stars can, can also be used as kind of um, evo evolution stones for certain planos. So for example, you have Fenrir. Um, if you want to, to give him like the Mars form, you will need the Mars elemental star. But that might also work for a couple of planos. So that means that for certain planos, you can see them, but if you don't have the right elemental star, they won't be able to evolve. Mm -hmm. So it's like a badge that does a couple of things. It's a it's a useful badge if you want. Mm -hmm. And when, now I I I'm pretty sure somebody could get could get pedantic that um that ha that having badges means that in Pokemon means that you'll be able to deal with certain with certain mm -hmm. level thresholds without Pokemon going against your orders, but for all, but for all in, for all accounts, people end up go, people end up um, going against, going at the badges in a specific order and never have to deal with that kind of over leveling. So so there's so while there's technically a use for badges in the series, for for practicality's sake, it's it's not it's not really the case. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you can see them as items if you want. Mm -hmm. So there are there are items, and there are something that adds to the story in a way. Like uh, collecting some stars or some special stars is more interesting than just moving to the next town, in a way. So yeah, I just try to change things a little bit, but um, obviously it's not um, like uh, you won't be able to skip certain elemental stars or go to the second one directly because that will make it an open world, and the complexity will be. Um, like a whole different level. Mm -hmm. And with the, with that in with that in mind, with when it comes yes. to when it comes to having just for, just um four um t four major four major t four major types, well the, four major types and of course and of course the um, dark variants, um is is it is it done in that manner to simplify the whole advantage disadvantage type th type thing? Since that, since well, with even with, even with Gen One Pokemon, you needed a small chart to cover advantages and disadvantages of types. Yeah, I, actually, that reminds me because I need to to make like a chart for my elements. Mm -hmm. I think some people asked for that. I'll probably make a video soon, but um, it, it's for different different things i would say so um the, the thing with pokemon is that especially now we have way too many types and some type some types end up being completely useless or some types are a little bit similar so you think about um is it actually necessary to have a different type for that 
like uh, for example, when I think about water and ice, mm -hmm. maybe we can merge both. I, I don't know. But um, it, it's also, as you said, to simplify things because obviously I'm not a triple A studio. I need to make things a little bit easier. Um, the second thing is I wanted to be a little bit faithful to Golden Sun because since the idea of having elemental stars and using planets came fr from that, mm. I wanted to use the same amount. So I didn't want to introduce, uh, besides dark and celestial, but um, I didn't want to introduce more planets. M maybe, who knows, like um, in a sequel, I'll introduce two new planets or four new planets. I have no idea. But the point is also to kind of challenge myself and be like, okay, this is the, or these are the elements. And then if people say it's not enough or it, like, it causes some problems, I'll find other ways to solve the problem. Meaning that I'll try to implement other features or find new ways to make the battle system more interesting without resorting to adding more types. Because that's like um, the easy solution. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to find other ways to make the, the battle more interesting without necessarily using the common thing of Okay, it's effective, cool, it's not effective, it's over. So yeah. I wanted to make it so that even if you are, let's say you are fighting against a guardian and um, nothing is effective against his monsters, it's not a problem because you can always use Simons, you can always use Synergies, and Synergies are strong enough so, so that it doesn't really matter that much. And you can find other ways to, to, to win. And in that way, you can have, for example, um, a team of only Mars Planos. So, like, the, the problem in Pokemon is having, for example, a team of only fire Pokemon is not a good idea, especially if you go and you're fighting against, um, like, some a gym, like, that has some ground Pokemon or a water Pokemon or something like that. You can't do anything. But in Final Source, you're supposed to be able to do something. Like, if you have Mars Planos, maybe it's not effective, but it, it, it will be faster to get stacks and have more Mars synergies, mm -hmm. for, for example and try to find um, or i try to find ways to create maybe combos or something if you have like more or more spanos or stuff like that and change from the it's effective it's not effective it's effective it's not it's not effective thing mm -hmm. now when it comes to when it comes to synergies are the majority of synergies that you have planned going to be attacks or there's or are there <laughs> some that might be um it, that might be say but might be say buffs or heals or the like, or is, or is that not, or is that not something you have planned? No, like the the, the spells and the synergies, they're all the, for damage. Like um, th that's how you deal damage. You use spells, and then after some um, turns, you have some stacks, and then you can use more powerful spells that are synergies. Mm -hmm. And everything else is going to be done with Simons. So basically, that's the goal of the the elementalists. So you, as the elementalist, you need to support your plano and make sure that he has the, the, the right conditions to win, in a way. Mm -hmm. So if he needs healing, you can heal. If he needs boosting, you're going to boost. Um, if he needs like a special effect, you can do that. So that's basically a way to introduce like Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, because in Yu-Gi-Oh! you don't really attack. Mm -hmm. as um, Like with the trap cards and magic cards, for example, you don't really attack. You... You support the monsters in a way. So that's the, the idea. It's a similar idea to Yu-Gi-Oh! where the monsters deal damage, they have attack points and defense if you want. And then everything else is Simons and it's like trap cards and magic cards in a way. Mm -hmm. Now, something else I found interesting is that you ended up going with an M <laughs> with an MP system for, pl for Plano spells. Yes. <clears throat> As opposed to the very very fancy and like a very fancy and like um, PowerPoint approach that Pokemon uses for it, for its moves, where each move has a certain number of charges. Um, what 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 led you to? And now, granted, I personally prefer an MP setup, but what led you down that particular route? Um. So uh, I think it, it's funny because it's like everyone agrees with this um, because I see all the Pokemon like games using something else besides PP. Mm -hmm. um, so that shows you that it's maybe a little bit out. I think it's it's a good system. It's original, but um, nowadays it's I don't know if it's really adapted. But the, the point is, 
or at least the way I see it is um, with MP it's more that f first thing I try to do something similar to Golden Sun so that's why I used something like um, HP MP mm -hmm. and um, Dragon Quest and all that like in all these games you have MP or something similar you don't really have PP so again because I'm trying to do something I, I always try to change things from Pokemon mm -hmm. anything that can be changed a little bit I'll, I will do it as long as it's possible mm -hmm. and it doesn't ruin the whole thing but um i think with mp the the thing that's interesting is that it makes you think a little bit before using a spell the problem with pokemon is that if you have a strong spell uh, what's going to happen is that you're only going to spam that same spell all the time so let's say you have for, for example something like um flamethrower mm -hmm. or uh, i think it's the the name you're just going to spam that until it's over and you're not going to use anything else. If you have like a fire Pokemon, you're only going to spam that. And again, it makes the battle more... Um, it's not dynamic enough. It's the same thing over and over again. So you, you go through so many trainers and you have the same move and you just click A, 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 A and it's the same move and that's it. So I wanted to change that a little bit so that before you use the spell, you think a little bit. You're like, okay, do I want to keep some mana? Do, you, do I want to use most of my mana because I'm going to be healed soon anyways. And it makes you think a little bit more. And also that allows you to have spells that consume a lot of mana and spells that don't consume as much. So you can have, for example, a really powerful spell that consumes a lot of mana, so you can only use it once in a while, but then you will use the weaker ones because they, they keep enough mana. So that way you can think about um, what you use, and it makes not only it makes the strong spells more um, interesting because you can only use them once in a while so when you use them it feels a little bit special but on top of that it it breaks the like what i'm trying to do with the battle system basically i'm trying to break all the constant stuff that's happening like anything that's monotone that keeps repeating i try to break it that's why i added turn effects and dynamic music and things like that because i'm trying to make the turn-based battle system more dynamic because, you know, it, it's already a little bit slow because you have to attack and you wait and it's not like um, a hack and slash type of game where you just move everywhere and it's so dynamic. So I'm trying to find ways to make it as dynamic as possible and any idea that comes to my mind, I just go and I try it. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be fair, the other, I, um, trying, to go with, trying to go with the with that char with that charge system that Pokemon has would end, would would not re, would not <clears throat> would not be all that compatible with the approach that you have with Simons, since what since then some um, restore it since restoring those is get, is going to be one particular avenue and having to restore each individual um spell would have issues. <laughs> um, um I, I'm not sure I'm getting what what do you mean like um. You mean assignments will have um, a type effectiveness? Um, not a, not no. I I mean it. If you were if you were to if you were to have if you were to have spells use the same use the same system that po that Pokemon does, that yes. might end up that might end up um, clashing with how with how that would relate to assignments. Why? Um, because it. In in Pokemon, obviously, each um each move has a as a certain number of as a certain number of uses. Yes. And so the, so if if so in in if you were to go with that, then instead of an, instead of an MP assignment, it would have it would have to be a move a move restoring one, and you would have to fit you would have to figure out how, what would be a reasonable amount of uses for each individual spell. Uh -huh. okay. So it ends up it ends up solving more it ends up sol so going with an MP route ends up solving a lot of problems. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Obviously it's so much easier to just restore MP than to go with the thing where you have to choose the spell and decide which one um gets like five or ten and if it's balanced or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's way more easier obviously. Yeah. Uh, and I know I've 
and for for what it's worth, that that whole charge system that it, that it that it uses that Pokemon uses is not as is not as unique as as I'm sure some Gen Oneers would like to claim because it's base it's basically the event is basically the spell charge system that's been used in Dungeons and Dragons since the 70s. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the game. I know it's very popular, or it used to be extremely popular. Um, but yeah, like uh, Pokemon, the thing is, Pokemon used a lot of ideas from other games. Like, um, for example, the the turn-based system and stuff like that came from SMT, Shin Megami Tensei, but a lot of people don't know that because Pokemon is Pokemon. It's the, the biggest media franchise in the world. So people think that Pokemon invented invented er everything. And so it's really hard to discuss with them because everyone's like, no, Pokemon started. And so everything else is imitation or... Um, yeah, like it's wonder, not it's if, not anything new. I wonder if that's why journalists all, and always end up getting their asses kicked whenever they, whenever they step into a um, Shin Megami Tensei game. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's a little bit more difficult, I think. When you're used to Pokemon, especially the recent games, um, you get your ass kicked in pretty much any game, to be honest. Well, well, that end, well, that end, um, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the low-hanging fruit that that game journalists working at the working at the bigger sites. Um, don't know how to don't know how to play games, anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if you want a review, you don't ask a journalist. You just take a hardcore gamer that has been playing like the RPGs for I don't know how many years. Mm -hmm. That's what he likes. That's that's what he does. That's what he reviews. That's what he talks about, um, or on Reddit or something forum, whatever. And then you ask him for a review, not some random journalist that yeah. um, covers some news or. But yeah, that's a different topic. Yeah, I just I just remember um, I I remember I remember a lot of people I remember a lot of people complain um, complaining when Shin Megami Tensei Four came out about how it was so much harder mm -hmm. than Persona, and I'm like, first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean the, that's the thing. Like the the new generation, like the the people growing up now, they they have no idea what what, what difficulty is. The, it's it's like everything is shared. You have tutorials online. I, I think that's what kind of made Pokemon so special in the past. Is that when you played a Pokemon game, it was a little bit difficult, at least the first generations, mm -hmm. and you didn't have any help. Meaning that if you get stuck in a place, you can spend like a whole month stuck because you didn't talk to that NPC and and got the the right HM or whatever, um, and that made it a little bit special. But nowadays, you can see all the monsters from the beginning, so there is no surprise. You know all the solutions, because if you get stuck for like five minutes, you can just Google solution. And um, it made games, plus the difficulty levels are way lower nowadays. So everything became way too easy, and that's why the moment you give something a li little bit difficult, just a little bit, people freak out. Um, I'd say, I'd say, I'd, I'd say when it comes to, I'd, I'd say, um, a a a significantly larger culprit, and th this is this is an issue. This is a bit of a rabbit hole in of itself. But a, I'd say a significantly larger culprit is pe is people doing the whole playing the game for the, for the story. Um, and I've I've gone I've gone on re I've gone on record saying that saying that I I don't re I don't respect quote unquote art games. Because because way too many of them are too are too embarrassed to be games, and I think I think I think that particular argument gave an avenue f to make things easier so that people have less barriers to experience the um, story. But the problem with that, the problem with that attitude is that it ignores the idea of it it not ignore but I'd say it doesn't take into account the possibility of story and gameplay being um, linked together like a yin-yang. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, like, if it's, if it's really hard, you can always have difficulty modes. Like, you can have normal, hard, and... Um, like, for example, I played Dragon Quest XI. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had no problem. Like, um, maybe there was one or two bosses a little bit difficult, 
But that, but that was it. That didn't prevent me from enjoying the story, enjoying the gameplay and everything, as you said. Whereas with the recent Pokemon games, it's um, like there is a difference between making it accessible to everyone and make it very accessible or like extremely easy. Like when I played, for example, Let's Go or Sword and Shield, mm -hmm. I am over leveled compared to the Pokemon League, which is not normal. You see what I mean? Like, I reached the Pokemon League, I have higher level, which never happened before. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference between making it easier and making it extremely easy to the point where you feel no threat. Like, I go to the Pokemon League, it's like I am the... Um, I am one of the elite members, you know, mm -hmm. and not the, the opposite. Yeah. Now, when it comes to... When it comes... When it comes to... Get, getting back, getting back on, tr getting back on track with things. Um, yeah. Would it, would it be fair? Would it be fair to say that you that mm -hmm. with the design of Final Stardust, you're aiming, you're aiming for a for a degree for a degree of challenge, not not to not to go not to go full on mega ten levels of hard, but at the very least, um, <laughs> encounters are not going to be a cakewalk. Oh, uh, what do you mean by that? Um. Well, what, well, for instance, we, like you, you, mean, brought, you brought up the whole thing you, of over leveling. Yeah, and I'd say I'd say what I'm and a lot of a lot of times that particular th that particular thing is balanced by and eventually the XP rate the um, XP that you get isn't it is going to be is going to be the law of diminishing returns in some in in some games, but. When it comes to when it comes to difficulty, would it be fair to say that you're on the uh, medium sca scaling of it? It's going to provide a challenge, but it's not going to be a death march. Yeah, the, that's the goal. Uh, I don't want to to make a game um, that's way too easy. Like the thing is, Final Source is not for kids. That, that's the thing. Like I'm, um, I think Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and all these franchises they're targeting kids. And I'm trying to do something else. I'm I'm trying to think about the people who are kind of like me that are not as young anymore, and that want a little bit of change. Of course, while being casual uh, or like while being casual, I'm not gonna make something hardcore only for experts, especially not with the first game. Um, but I want to make the game a little bit challenging because I think that's what makes the like certain battles more memorable. Like what when you when you take Pokemon again. Um, if I ask you, okay, which is the fight that you remember the most? Um, chances are, for example, you would you would say Cynthia against um, or, or against Cynthia, for example, in Gen Four, because she had Guard Chomp, and that monster was or that Pokemon was so strong, he he can sweep your whole team, and you, you'd be like, wait, I thought everything was fine until here, and then the final monster just um, ruins everything, and so I think having a little bit of challenge is always good. So I'm going to make it a little bit difficult so that you... I'm not going to try to overdo it in the sense that I don't want you to grind endlessly, but I will add a little bit of grinding. And for, for that, I'll try to make it a little bit more rewarding. For example, um, the more Wild Planos um, you beat, the more items you can get. Or for example, every time you beat a, a Wild Plano, you will have 10% chance to get an item or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't become like a like a chore where... You feel like, oh my god, I have to XP, and more like, okay, I'm just gonna grind a little bit because I need to farm some items or some XP, and um, it it makes sense. So that it's a little bit exciting, and you're like, okay, the game is a little bit difficult. I like it, but it's not too much, so it's fine. And that way, it also makes some um, because the main theme of the game is the the badass theme. So that's the thing that I'm trying to do with the monsters, the characters, and all that. So. You can't have a badass theme like Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Ds, for example, and make everything easy. Like it would ruin the whole thing. So, of course, we need to have some kind of difficulty. But um, I'll just try to make it so that the grinding doesn't become kind of like um, JRPGs where you, you need to grind like crazy to to make progress. Mm -hmm. Um, the funny thing, the funny thing is when you mention when you mention boss fight, boss fights that you that that you remember, um. I always end, I always end up thinking of two in particular from these from the 
from the gen the generation that I the generation that I happen to be happen to be fond of from the early days, and I'm probably going to be stepping stepping on some toes at once again, but I don't care. Um, I am I am very fond of Gen two. And okay, yeah, I love Gen two as well. There are um there are two fights in yeah. in Gen two that I re that I remember for good and less good reasons. The less good yeah, is huh? is the set is the second um, gym battle that you end up getting. Ah, second. I thought you would say third, but yeah, okay. Um, yes, second can be trick as well. Because because of that fucking mill tank. <laughs> yeah, mill tank is best three, right? Yeah, I be I believe I can't remember the or I can't remember the order, but that was the, yeah yeah yeah. Was yeah. Normal mill tank. Uh, everyone remembers mill tank. And it's best three. Yeah. In in fairness, that particular <laughs> fight is easy when you know it's coming, but yeah, yeah. when you, when you do, when you don't know it's coming and you and you're and you probably have the mindset of oh you're up against normals those are those are fir those are fir that's first tier stuff, um, yeah, that do that doesn't mean a lot and of course when it comes to the one I remember more fondly that. Is the, that is the fight with red on Mount Silver? Yeah. Um. Largely because it fe it feels like the kind of it it feels like the kind of challenge that you would see in a hidden boss in a Final Fantasy game. Yeah. And <clears throat> given given the fact that you've that you've mentioned wanting to do that style of story with with um Final Stardust. Have you have you considered putting those putting those sort of hidden challenges? Honestly, it's all going to depend on um, the budget and how things go. Because um, obviously, if I manage to finish in time and I still have some budget, I'll try to add a couple of things. Um, but if I can't, or if I'm limited with the budget, I might just um, do the bare minimum, like um, at least having a story that's complete and. All that, so it's all going to depend on the budget and the time. To be honest, because I, I don't know, maybe the game is going to take less time than I thought, or maybe it's going to take more time. So it's all going to depend on how things go and the publisher that I get. Obviously, if I get a publisher that gives me more funding, I can add more things. If I get a publisher that gives me less funding because I don't have the choice, then I'll have to uh, remove some features. So I'll say it all depends on money, because I mean, game development is mainly. Um, or it's all about money, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I had ideas like that. I, I hope I can implement them, but I'm not really sure. Like I'm not gonna promise anything. For example, I was thinking about doing something um, like a, how's it called? Like a Battle Frontier or something, mm -hmm. you know, or the Pokemon World Tournament in Pokemon Black. I think something that's um, um, how do we call it? Like a an end game loop or something like that. So that even if you finish the story, you can still have some battles or something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that I want to implement, if possible, of course. Yeah. Um, so that people ha have something to do after finishing the game and they still continue to play uh, Final Stars. And not just like, okay, I finished the story. Awesome. It was a great game. Goodbye. You know. But we'll see. If I don't have the choice, I'll at least I'll try to make sure the story is good and the, the gameplay is good overall during the main campaign. And if we still have some budget, I will. I'll try to do something extra. Yeah, and and also uh, b before I forget, there's also the developer. Like um, um, if you see in the vertical slice, I added my own NPC, mm -hmm. like the the developer. That's kind of like um, a hidden thing, because uh, maybe towards the end you will have a secret battle with him or something. Mm -hmm. So. And. Well, you, well, you'd be in good, you'd be in good company with that because Bloodstain did. Bloodstain did that with Iga being a being a boss in his own game. Who? Iga. Who's that? Um, Ko Koji Igarashi, also known also known as Iga. He he was the guy who bas who's who's largely responsible for the met for um, Symphony of the Night and that particular style. Hence the hence the, hence the term Igavania. Okay. Um, but. Bloodstained is a spiritual successor to that style, and he ended up. Ma and one of the hidden bosses in, in it is him. 
Yeah, I think it's it's something cool, and uh, I don't know. I always wanted to do something like that. It's just that I never had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm working on my own game, I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, uh, this kind of stuff is something that people like and hard to implement. Like, um, once you have elementalists and you have the code and everything, and you have cutscenes, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just that you you do concept art, um, an extra concept art for that, extra sprite. It's gonna cost a little bit of money, but it's it's not that hard to add, and it makes a difference. It allows your game to stand out a little bit more, and I think it's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. And for what it's worth, um, one potential avenue that I could e that I could easily see happening with this kind of game is is people doing um, build runs the same way people do build runs for Diablo. Build runs? Well, what what is that? I have no idea. Um. I've basic basically do, basically doing a doing a run with um with a cer with a certain playstyle or a certain de or a certain deck style or or the like. Um, okay, uh, I get it now. You mean like um a different element and stuff like that, like a yeah. team of a certain element and then trying a team with a different element and then using a deck with certain assignments. Yeah, that's 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 certainly one possibility I could I could see. Um. Of course, of course, of course. Then, th then there's all there's always going to be the crazies who will do who, who will do who will try who will try and survive with the um with the low with the lowest amount possible, akin to somebody trying to play Resident Evil Four and using nothing but the survival knife, um, or so yeah, or someone playing Doom and using nothing but the pistol, which is <laughs> it's technically yeah, that's po that's it's technically possible. It's going to be an exercise in patience, but you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people like doing challenges. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool thing. Like yeah. they, they really like it. Uh, they really like taking them, themselves out of, out of their comfort zone in a way. And that's the funny thing. Like you say, okay, I'm going to make an easy game, but some people really don't want the easy game. They they try to create it. They they try to create challenges. So that they make the game a little bit more difficult. That's what's happening with Pokemon, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, th that's something that I'm trying to do as well with uh, Final Stars because I've noticed that there are a lot of games that are very simple, that had a small budget, but that exploded in terms of popularity because they were replayable. And you had the possibility to replay them in a different way every single time. And so that's something that people really loved. And I'm trying to do something like that as well so that... Mm -hmm. For example, in Pokemon, if you're fighting, um, uh, I don't know, like a fire badge, for example, if you don't have like a water Pokemon or a ground Pokemon or something, it's going to be extremely difficult. And so it's kind of forcing you to get like a water Pokemon, even if you are not interested in getting one. So in Final Stars, I want to make it so that you can choose any team you want, any deck you want, but you can still make it happen. Mm -hmm. It might be a little bit more difficult, but it's possible. And that also adds, as you said, like the... The fact that you can replay the game, for example, let's say you have three save systems or like three saves. Um, uh, how do we call it? Slots. Mm -hmm. Three save slots. And so what you can do is you can play uh, the game on one slot with, I don't know, like a Mars team. And then in a different slot with um, like a Venus team with um, a different deck. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to finish the game in the same way. Or you can just replay the game on the same save slot. It, it's not a problem. But the point is to make it playable more than once. Because um, that's where, you know, people really love the game and they replay it and they they, they keep making more content. And it's a loop that um, never ends in a way. Yeah. Rather than having like a big story, boom, they finish it and then they never play it again or they, they never look at it again. Like when you are a big game, it's fine, but... Uh, when you are like a small studio, it's um, it's a little bit of a problem because you're trying to create your own place in the market, mm -hmm. and so you need as much attention as possible. And it's hard to create when your game is just about the story. Yeah, and that's those particular build runs that you mentioned. That's ju that is ju that is just covering the that's just that's just covering the leanings for for planos. That's not even getting into the num the numerous potential build types that. That people could that people could discover when it comes to your assignment deck. Uh, that's the funny thing, actually, because I'm trying 
to do things, but even I sometimes don't realize what I'm doing. Like, uh, uh, I add m maybe some Simons, I'm like, okay, it's fine. You can just use the Simons to increase your attack, and that's it. But I'm sure I'll find someone who will use it in a different way, and that's also what's interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's why you need um, to have feedback from the community, because you are um, the developer. You're not necessarily a gamer. Like, you're not an expert in an RPG or something like that. You just know how to make games. Mm -hmm. So you need the those people to actually um, help you with the game because th sometimes, as you said, they will discover some secret deck that's too OP that I never thought about, for example. Mm -hmm. Now... As I, now, as I rec as I recall, the ne the next phase that you that you're that you're going with is full is fully developing the game as well as developing a um I believe it was a PowerPoint like pitch. Yeah, the pitch deck. Mm -hmm. Oh. So what? And when it can. So how how far how far is that how far is that coming along? Uh, the what? Uh, I didn't the, understand. You mean the pit, the I, I plan to do? Uh, yeah, the pitch deck is finished. I already made a video on YouTube mm -hmm. talking about that. But um, li like you mean, I'm doing other things besides game, besides the game. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm. This is more of a. This is. This is more of a general. What What do you have? Com what do you have coming down the pipe? Kind of. Um. Th kind of question. Oh, okay. Um. So I covered this a little bit in the pitch deck video, but um. Basically, what I'm trying to do, at least this is the concept, we'll see how it goes in the future, but um, what I try to do with Final Stars is is basically making the game um, scalable. I don't know how to use it or how to say it otherwise, but what I mean by that is make sure that the game um, can have sequels mm -hmm. so that when you play it, you're like, okay... If we have Final Stars 2, it makes sense. If we have Final Stars 3, it makes sense. Like, it's a game that can have a sequel. It's not a game that's, um, how can I say that, like a one-time experience, one -time experience type of thing. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a game that can expand into different things. For example, um, when you check the voice acting, you can say, okay, we have cutscenes, we have concept arts and stuff like that. Okay, th this can be done into an anime, for example, mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, if you see the story, again... Uh, the Japanese stuff, like the Japanese influence and the vibe and all that, we can say, okay, maybe you can make a manga out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not just tr trying to um, create one game. I'm trying to create a brand around Final Stars. Mm -hmm. So the goal would be to make the game. That would be the main thing. But then we can also have like a maybe uh, one book of manga uh, for every game that releases, mm -hmm. one or two anime episodes for e every game that releases. That kind of stuff. And then obviously you have um, the typical stuff like merch and stuff like that. But I'm really trying to to create something like a Japanese brand, like what you see with Digimon, Pokemon, and all that um, a game. And then you have other things like anime and manga, or maybe other interesting things. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll make like um, a card game where you only use Simons. And also, like the, the monsters are also Simons, or um, cards as well. I, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, th that's the idea behind Final Stars. Now, and I'll certainly be keeping an eye out for ev for everything that develops, because no matter no matter what, I f I do feel that there's something special here, and I and I want to and I want to be able to see that through. Thank you. Uh, but with but with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the insanity at play here. <laughs> no worries. It was a pleasure. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to, whether it's to further go into Final Stardust or or um, or or why the or why every Yu-Gi-Oh player with in in my home state hates me because of my de because of my Gravekeeper deck, <laughs> the the door is always open, as I often yeah. say around here. Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good uh, example or analogy. But um, yeah, I mean, probably every big milestone or something. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in between, it's really hard to find st stuff to talk about mm -hmm. or you don't have enough uh, meat, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So um, I don't know, maybe when the demo is released or when the game is released, you know, that, that kind of milestone where we have enough things to talk about. Yeah, why not? Uh, I don't mind. Mm-hmm.
And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>